Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ron, and today, once again, we are going to be going over all of the weapons in Killing Floor because we are talking about the survivalist. So we're going to be ranking them in our tier list, I'm going to be going over these kind of quick because we have a lot of weapons to get through. I hope I put them all on here, I think I have a total of like 130 something, which is a lot of weapons. Uh, I hope that's all of them. If I forget a couple of them, um, I do apologize for that, but let's begin. Our very first weapons that we start out with Survivalist, we have the Gore Shiv. Gore Shiv is our knife. Um, Survivalist does get bonus melee damage, uh, at least if you want to take that. So it is an option to be using this and you get the bonus movement speed. And that's pretty good. Um, that's just melee weapons in general. It's still a knife though. You're still probably only going to use it for the first wave if you want to get some extra value or if you need to block or parry something or you're completely out of ammo with everything. So Gore Shiv is going to go into D tier like it usually does. Uh, knives you're not really going to be using unless either you're doing a challenge or once again those other scenarios that I already put out. Uh, 9mm pistol is also okay on survivalist. I'm going to put this one into D tier just like it goes in most classes. It does okay damage. You're probably going to use it early on if you run out of shots with your primary weapon. Uh, unless you just really want to get more value with your knife, you can do that too. It's decent for getting headshots. Uh, kind of basic there. And now we have all the grenades to talk about because survivalist got new grenades. So you now can pick between six total grenades. You do need two perks in particular if you want to take two of these, so we'll talk about them. And these options are the high explosive grenade that Commando has. This one is all around a pretty decent grenade. I'd put this one into B tier. Um, it does high explosive damage. It has a short fuse, high damage overall. It's the same as the half stick of dynamite. It's great for clearing up quarter pounds. It's okay for flesh pounds. It's okay for crowds. Not really much to complain about there. The medic grenade is the first grenade where you need a perk to take it. This would be at your level 15 where you need medic training. That being said, medic grenades are still the best grenades in the game. You can't hurt yourself with them. You can heal yourself. You can heal allies. You can hold out on areas pretty easily with this. It's not as good as it would be on medic, but that's just because medic has the other passive perks to it. Meta grenades are still really good, and I think they belong in S tier. Molotovs, on the other hand, are really not that great on survivalists. The only way you can get these is if you take the weapon vest, and there's not really a reason to be taking Molotovs on survivalists, especially now that you have other grenades that you can pick from, so you don't need to stay with the Molotovs where you used to. Molotovs are just too easy to hurt yourself with. They don't do that much damage without the floor fire that Firebug has. So I'm going to put this one, honestly, in D tier. I... I'm not taking the Molotovs on Survivalist anymore at all, just because it's so easy to burn yourself or just not to get a whole lot of value out of it. Then we have Nail Bombs, which Nail Bombs did get better recently, which is kind of nice. They have a high chance of stun. Um, they can do okay damage towards small enemies. They also have a big explosion radius, which means you can hurt yourself with them, but they usually don't hurt as much as other grenades. That is all kind of nice. The main problem, though, is that we also got Flashbangs, and I don't really find myself taking Nail Bombs over Flashbangs with survivalists pretty much ever. I'm going to put this one into C tier simply because we have the option of flashbangs. I think nail bombs are actually okay by themselves and one of the better grenades now. So flashbangs. Flashbangs you can't hurt yourself with. Big plus there. They can stun enemies. They can kill small enemies because they do a decent amount of damage, at least towards any of the smaller enemies. So blowing up blowing up crawlers or blowing up clots actually isn't too bad. Uh, great for stunning scrakes. Great for stunning flesh pounds. Uh, all around like solid A tier, maybe S tier. They're really good on survivalists right now. And then we have the frag grenade. Frag grenade I'm also going to put into B tier. It's about the same as the high explosive grenade in my opinion. It's got a bigger explosion radius and it's got higher potential damage, but it has less consistent damage than the high explosive. It's still good for clearing up crowds though, so if you want to take it and chuck them into crowds, that's fine too. Then we have all of our weapons, which these are not in any particular order because they just aren't, so let's go over them. Uh, C4 is really good on survivalists. It's really good on anybody if you want to take it as an off perk weapon, but you do have extra weight with survivalists. So I'm going to put these up into A tier. I think it's all around fairly solid. Grenade pistol is also fairly solid. You can get it early on, and now that you can pick your starting weapon, you can take it right away. So you have a more expensive weapon that clears up enemies pretty well. You can specialize with explosive weapons. Still not as good as it is on demo, but still like a B tier weapon. Single 1858, lots of value. Decent weapon early on if you want to take it. Super cheap. Um, probably like a B tier. It's actually pretty ammo efficient. Single 500 Magnum, probably A tier. Cheap, um, ammo efficient. You can buy it early on. Very high damage at 160 damage a shot. 
So all around pretty good. It also counts as a cross perk weapon for both of your level five. So you'll get faster reloads regardless. Same goes with the uh, 1858 revolver because both these count as sharpshooter and gunslinger weapons. A single Desert Eagle, probably also B tier. It's honestly not as great as it is on gunslinger as it is on survivalist, mostly because of the recoil. The Deagle does have a decent amount of recoil, but it's not uncontrollable and you can't have the faster reloads. So not a terrible weapon. It's also very lightweight. AA-12 is a very solid option for survivalists. And I think I'm actually going to put this one up into S tier because if you take ammo vest, you can take this. Plus you still have another 10 weight to take whatever the heck else you want. It clears through small enemies and big enemies pretty efficiently. It is more expensive because it is a tier four weapon, but it is a solid tier four. Battle axe is a weapon that you really don't want to take on survivalist even though you can spare the extra weight and even though you can get bonus melee damage i still wouldn't take it over something like the um ion thruster so i'm gonna put this one into c tier it's still heavy it's still kind of slow it is pretty satisfying to completely destroy stuff with it but uh, it's still not a fantastic weapon ar-15 is d tier <laughs> there's no reason to take this at all anymore on survivalist the ar-15 is just not a great weapon in general and semi-auto or three round burst in a 20 round magazine is just not good yes you can have faster reloads but you can do that and you could also pick a better starting weapon so there's not really a reason to be taking this at any point unless you just find it on the ground and you just want to use it for extra value which is perfectly fine blunderbuss is probably like an a tier it counts as both a demo and a support weapon um that doesn't really matter though because you're going to get faster reloads if you just pick the heavy weapons training but it does have explosive damage and it does have shotgun damage and it's pretty good at doing both of those. Um, you can potentially have bigger explosions if you'd like, and the shotgun is pretty consistent at most close ranges. Cock and Burn is D tier. This is probably the worst weapon to have on survivalist. Firebug weapons just don't do well on survivalist because you don't get any bonus from them. And without any of Firebug's perks, the Cock and Burn is extremely underwhelming. The main thing that makes it strong on Firebug and makes it so efficient on Firebug is that you get ground fires. Without that, you're doing very little damage per uh, flame. You can start ground fires, but they're not doing nearly as much as they otherwise would. So it's okay for clearing trash, but again, there's no real reason to be taking this. Crossbow. The crossbow is pretty good. I'm going to put this one up into A tier. It's cheap. It does high damage. It has long range. You can have faster reloads with it. Uh, it has a very high chance of stunning. So if you want to keep stunning enemies, this is a great option. It also upgrades really well. So if you want to throw upgrades into it, it does scale high. Crowville is probably like C tier as well. You can do better on melee weapons. Then the Crowville, it is an okay starting option though if you want to take it and you're running melee expert. That way at least you're not running through any sort of ammo early on, but you still have some better options that are level 1 weapons. The Boomstick. Boomstick is really good on Survivalist. I'm going to put this one high up into A tier. Um, I, I'm just going to set them just the way that they're entered. But this is probably on the higher end of A tier, maybe low end of S tier. Very valuable weapon early on. It does really high damage. Uh, can clear up enemies very well. It has its unique secondary where you can fire out both barrels and if you're jumping then you move backward so you can get more velocity I guess out of that. You can potentially run away better. You can jump over things with the shotgun jump. Dual 1858s, they're an okay option but I'd actually put them below a single 1858 because you're getting the single one for extra value. You're taking these if you found another one on the ground or you started out with them which is an okay option. They do decent damage. Uh, they scale well with upgrades, but you can do better for the weight on survivalists, so I, I think they're kind of average. Dual 500s, I'd also maybe put... Eh, I'd probably put them into A tier, actually. They're still decent. They still do high damage. They do high damage per second. And they have long range. The recoil is less manageable, though. I would put one 500 Magnum above two 500 Magnums on survivalists, just because it is more flexible for the class. Uh, Deagles are still probably D tier, or uh, B tier, sorry, not D tier. Deagles are not D tier at all. They do high damage. They are fairly accurate at longer ranges. It, the recoil is a little bit difficult to get used to, and you don't have perks like rack them up to really scale their damage like you do with Gunslinger. Still not a bad option, but I still don't think they're as good as just one Deagle if you want to put it on Survivalist because of the weight. Uh, 1911s, another like C tier weapon. They're fine. They do decent damage per shot. They shoot pretty quick. You can reload them fast. They're just kind of average for what you get, and they don't really scale incredibly well with upgrades. Uh, not as much as like the Deagles or the 500s would, but they're still fine. Dual Winter Bites. Winter Bites are actually really good on Survivalist. I would put these high up into A tier. Um, they are a good weapon because you can freeze enemies with them. They're really good on Boss Wave because you can freeze the bosses with them. 
and that's just very useful for the team. I wouldn't really recommend throwing upgrades into them, even though they scale okay with upgrades. I think they benefit more from just being what they are. Uh, Eviscerator is an interesting option, but it's still probably C tier. You do have a ranged option that is melee, so that is kind of nice, but you have better options than that, assuming you have DLCs. If you don't, then the Eviscerator is a pretty decent option if you want to have bonus movement speed and still have a ranged option. Fire Axe is probably like another C tier. It is better than like the Crowbull because it does hit really hard and it has a high chance of stunning, but it's still not the most efficient melee weapon that you can have on survivalist if you want movement speed and if you want it for about the same weight flamethrower is probably d tier there's not really a reason to be taking it similar to the cock and burn it is stronger it has longer reach it has more damage it's still not that good on uh survivalist though you can go with better um, trash clearing options than the flamethrower the frost fang is easy s tier this one is one of the best weapons on survivalist it gives you the freezing ability, but it also counts as a melee weapon, so you do get bonus movement speed if you want to take that. You can have fast reloads on it too. It's all around just super solid, and it doesn't weigh that much. This is definitely like the weapon that puts a lot of the other melee weapons to shame. We have the Glock 18 with the shield. There's really not a reason to be taking Glock 18 with a shield. I'm going to put this one into C tier on Survivalist. Yes, you can block and parry with it, but why not just go with a melee weapon at that point? You won't be limiting yourself. The damage is okay, and you can clear up small things, but you can do that with more efficient weighted weapons the the glock 18 and shield just isn't one of them uh single glock 18 this one's probably like a tier this one's still really good this one clears up trash fast it doesn't weigh that much uh it doesn't cost too much because you're only buying one of them and it doesn't have that much recoil because you're only buying one of them so all around pretty solid on survivalist two of them is probably b tier though you don't really need this much rate of fire if you want to do this why not just go with a submachine gun um it'll weigh less and probably do more for you there's just not really a reason to be taking these. Again, you don't have like rack them up to scale their damage really high with uh, Survivalist. Medic Pistol is super solid on Survivalist. It's super solid on any class. Uh, I'd probably put this one up into A tier. You can heal with it. It doesn't weigh very much. You can have fast reloads, no recoil, scales well with upgrades. All around, just a really solid weapon. Pretty much the same thing can be said about the Medic SMG. It's very weight efficient. It clears up small enemies. You can heal with it. All around great. Medic Shotgun, also really good. Um, a tier as well. You can heal with it. It does high damage. It actually has really high accuracy too for a shotgun. Uh, really nice spread. So you can shoot this at quite long range. And you can spam it since it's semi-auto. Medic AR, kind of the same thing as the rest of the medic weapons that we've talked about. Really good. If you want an assault rifle, this is probably one of the better choices because it does have nice sights. It doesn't have too much recoil. It shoots fairly fast. And you can heal with it all around pluses. And then we have the arc generator. This one's easy S tier. This one is one of the best boss fighting weapons in the game. One of the best crowd fighting weapons in the game. It does really high damage and it scales well with the upgrade that you can throw into it. It's not entirely necessary though. You can pair this with just about anything. And if you're in a hallway map, this one is absolutely devastating to everything that you're shooting it at. Um, one of my favorite weapons in the game and just one of the strongest weapons in my opinion. Heal Thrower. Heal Thrower is still pretty decent on Survivalist. I'm going to put this into A tier, where it would definitely be S tier for uh, Medic. It's not as good on Survivalist. It is still heavy, but it still counts as two healing weapons or healing tools, I guess. You can have the healing darts and the healing gas. The main thing that made it so good on Medic, though, is that you can stack your buffs on top of it. So you can have all of your damage reduction, your damage buffs, your movement speed buffs onto everybody that you're spraying it on. You can't really do that with Survivalist. Still really solid if you want to play Medic, though. The Incision Rifle, um, probably another A tier. You can heal with it. It does decent damage per shot. It has the EMP status effect on it. I would rank it a little bit lower than some of the other Medic weapons, but it's still a really solid weapon. Kaboom Stick, easy S tier, super solid weapon on everybody, even more so on Survivalist that can make use of it and have faster reloads, as well as you can have larger explosion radius if you want. Pairs really well with these other options, taking the Kaboom Stick and the Arc Gen or with the uh, Frost Fang is really, really good. HRG Nail Gun, this one's okay. This one's a decent submachine gun. I'd put it up into A tier because it counts as piercing damage. You can turn it to a shotgun mode. It will have fairly fast reloads. The damage that you lose out compared to the different classes because Survivalist does have less damage growth overall than the other classes, but still has some, um, isn't really that significant with some machine guns. You really don't notice that much. And the nail gun is really good. The HRG Scorcher is probably like C tier on Survivalist. It can still be used to clear up areas. It's probably better for clearing up than the uh, Cock and Burn the Flamethrower, but it's still not that good. You don't have any fire bonuses to it. 
Dual Buckshots, uh, probably like C tier. You don't really want to go with Dual Buckshots. They're okay. You can have the faster reloads on them. They do okay damage. They don't scale well with upgrades. And for a tier 3 shotgun, you can kind of do better than these. A single Buckshot, though, is pretty good, especially with how cheap it is. I'm going to put this one up into B tier. Doesn't weigh very much. Super cheap. You can have fast reloads. Clears up things. It's a great option to take if you want to save some extra money early on. The 501 Medic Rifle, probably another A tier. Medic grenades are super useful on it. The Assault Rifle part is kind of meh, and Assault Rifles aren't necessarily the thing that you want to be going for with Survivalist. Submachine guns tend to kind of outcompete them for what you're using them for, um, so I, I would just probably keep it here. It's not really an S tier. Vampire is probably like a C tier. It's just such an awkward weapon to be using, especially on Survivalist. Yes, it can do pretty good damage, and yes, it's good in solo, but... It's just such an awkward weapon for the weight, and for healing, it's really kind of inconsistent in team settings. The uh, Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath is probably A tier. This one is honestly probably the best firebug weapon on Survivalist, probably because it also counts as a shotgun. That really helps it. Shotguns are really good in general in this game. They do high damage. This one, too. This one also counts as fire damage, so you can easily put down ground fires. You can clear up smaller enemies like crawlers, clots. And it works really well against, like, bloats. It's also fairly cheap, just being a tier 2 weapon. So, yeah, all around fairly solid. Uh, Ion Thruster is pretty good on Survivalist. I'm going to put this one up into A tier. It's still not as good as it is on Berserker. But it is a solid all-around melee option. So if you want to go heavy melee and you want to do more damage towards big enemies, the Ion Thruster is a good choice. Uh, AK is honestly pretty meh on Survivalist. I'd put this one into C tier. It's not that great. There's not really a reason for you to be buying this for a tier 3 weapon. Um, you have better options than this. Even in Assault Rifles, you have better options than this one. But mostly, you could also buy a Tier 3 submachine gun and probably get the job done better for just clearing up small enemies. And if you want to go with bigger enemies, just take a shotgun or a rifle. Katana, probably another C tier. It's an okay melee weapon. Um, you don't really need it, though. There's better melee weapons, and it kind of gets outcompeted by some. M14, probably B tier. It's okay. It does okay damage. You can have a fast reload with it. It shoots pretty quick. Um, but you can't scale it up with rack em up like you can with Sharpshooter. That's one thing that makes the M14 pretty good on Sharpshooter. Single 1911, another B tier. It's okay if you want to get it early on. It's ammo efficient. Doesn't cost very much. All around okay. The M32 grenade launcher, probably like C tier. This just costs too much and weighs too much. Yes, you can build it for faster reload and for larger explosion radius, which is kind of nice and it is a fun weapon to spam out. It's just not a very practical weapon in most senses. M4 shotgun, very good. I'd put this one high up into A tier. This one's a very good weapon. Uh, solid shotgun. You do have to reload it fairly often, but that doesn't matter too much with your faster reload speed. You get eight shots that do high damage. It has a tight spread. Uh, it scales well with upgrades. It's all around just a really solid shotgun in general. The M79 grenade launcher is okay. I'd put this one into B tier. It does well against crowds. That's about it, but if you just want to blow up crowds, it's not a terrible option. Hemoglobin, this one is easy S tier. This one is one of the best melee weapons in the game. Uh, if not the best melee weapon in the game, you can heal yourself and heal allies with it. You can also have a bigger explosion radius because the explosion from this counts towards your explosion radius, uh, level 20 perk, I believe. So you have bigger healing clouds that cover more area. This hurts a lot more enemies, and the Hemoglobin is super lightweight. Uh, this is a really great option if you want to take something that's super, I guess, ammo efficient because you don't really need to use ammo with it and just pair it with something like the Kaboom Stick or the Arc Gen or whatever you really want. It'll probably work just fine. Microwave Gun, another like C tier. Or actually, I'm just going to put this one D tier. It's, it's really not that good on Survivalist. It weighs too much. The microwaves are okay because they do decent damage towards big enemies. And the knockback is kind of fine. It does count as explosion damage, so that's better than it could be. But there's really not a reason to be taking it. The Mine Reconstructor, I'm going to put into B tier. This one can be good. It depends on the map, depends on your placement of the mines. You can set them up behind the team and be able to heal up your team pretty efficiently that way. You can also use them to potentially ward off areas to where enemies have to run through them and you deal damage. That can be good too. It does weigh a decent amount. It's really not the best if you want to go with a healing build for Survivalist, but it's okay. Minigun is like another B tier. It's honestly not too terrible on Survivalist because you can at least carry it and carry other weapons, so you can just use this for clearing up small things. It's, eh, well, actually, the more I think about this, it's C tier. It's average. It's, it's still not worth taking. There's still not really a reason to take it over other weapons that do a similar job. Mosin Bayonet is pretty solid on Survivalist. I'm going to put this one up into A tier. This sadly doesn't count as a melee weapon, so you can't run around faster with it. 
but it is still a solid weapon overall doing high damage and not weighing too much it also scales well with upgrades and you can block and parry with it which is pretty nice pulverizer is another solid weapon on survivalist i'd put this one up in a tier this one synergizes well because you can have faster reloads on it you can have a larger explosion radius on it and uh, you can also block and parry with it so you can move around faster with it it just synergizes really well it hits all those nice spots and it's one of the better melee weapons to be running on survival, especially for the uh, weight and the cost investment. Railgun, pretty solid weapon, another A tier, does high damage, you can throw it on most builds, um, pairs really well if you want to take a uh, weapon harness so that you can carry even more stuff. I like pairing this with like the AA-12, I think that's a really fun combination. Dual Rhinos are like a lot of the dual weapons, you don't really need them, but they're okay. Uh, C tier, they're just kind of average. A single Rhino, A tier, I think it's better. It's better for the weight it does decent damage it has its weird uh shattering effect whenever it hits anything um not sure entirely why it does that but it is kind of a cool ricochet mechanic bulldog assault rifle you're really not going to be taking this it's better than the m or it's better than the ar-15 but i'm still going to put it down here in d tier uh full auto is nice magazine size is nice weight is okay and you actually do get a lot of ammo with this weapon so that is a plus but again, you could just go with a submachine gun. You could just stick with the MP7 early on and you'll probably have a better time than going with the bolt up. Uh, Scar, uh, another kind of average assault rifle, uh, C tier. It's not really that great to be taking on survivalist. There's not really a reason for it, especially for the amount of cost that you're putting into it. It's okay on weight, but that's about it. Uh, Seal Squeal is all around pretty solid on survivalist. I'd put this one up into A tier. Bigger explosion radius is nice. You can shoot it pretty quick. You can reload it pretty quick. Super fun weapon to use, and it does do pretty high damage. The pump action shotgun, kind of an average weapon, honestly, for survivalist. I'd put this one into C tier. Faster reloads on it is pretty nice, but that's about all it has going for it. You could pick other shotguns like the trench gun that will probably do better. Or Sorry, the dragon's breath. Same with the double barrel. If you really like shotguns, though, it's not a terrible option to be taking. You know, it doesn't weigh that much either. Maybe I'd move this up to B tier. It's honestly, I'd rather have this than most of these other weapons early on. Because at least it's it's something. Tommy gun, uh, another like C or D tier. I might put a D tier. There's no real reason to take the Tommy gun on survivalist. Yes, it can have faster reloads, but so can the other assault rifles and submachine guns. And it doesn't really outcompete the MP7 in any significant way. It's also really not worth taking later on. You really don't want to throw upgrades into it. The only real thing it has going for it is that you can buy it early and it has a large magazine then. So maybe around wave two, it's okay. Uh, nail gun, pretty solid. Um, pretty solid. I'd probably put this one up into A tier. Does piercing damage. The shotgun part is pretty good. It's very ammo efficient. It's very cost effective. Um, scales actually really well with upgrades too. So if you really like the nail gun and you want to ricochet the nails into enemies, this is an option. The freeze thrower, I'm going to put into B tier. It's great as a support weapon, but that's about it. By itself, it's honestly not that great. It's secondary fires out a shotgun type effect that can freeze. Uh, if you have access to all the weapons, though, you're going to take the frost fang over this just because it's more weight efficient. It's, it's just all around way better. Um, the M45, probably like another C tier. This isn't a, a submachine gun that you're really going to go for. It has okay damage, and it's not too bad for the price but you still have better options for what you're going to be using this for. If you want a high damage tier three, you're not gonna be looking for the M45. You're gonna be looking for something like the M4, or the Mosin, or like the Kaboom stick. It's not gonna be the M45. You're gonna be taking a submachine gun just to clear up small enemies. Uh, the good old brain basher here. Um, this is the mace and the shield. This one is okay on survivalist. You can move around faster with it. It's one of the better weapons if you like to block and parry with. So I'm going to put this up into A tier. Still would probably prefer like the Ion Thruster or the Pulverizer over it. I think that they're better options, especially like the Hemoclobber. But it's okay. Um, if you just want to build tank survivalist, it is an option. Uh, compound Bow. Compound Bow is probably like C tier. Again, it's expensive. You can freeze enemies with it. It doesn't count as a melee weapon, so you can't really run around with it. It's it's just kind of okay on survivalist. Dual Spitfires, probably like, again, C tier. You can clear up small enemies with them. They scale well with upgrades, but you're probably not going to be taking them on survivalist. So uh, they're better than some of these other weapons, but still not way great. Hemogoblin, probably actually A tier because it does work well as a secondary weapon. If you want to use it as a weapon, it works really well against big enemies because you can slow them down with the healing dart or with the uh, regular darts. 
you can heal. It has some of the best healing darts in the game. It's just it's kind of heavy. So, again, maybe not one of the best medic weapons to throw on Survivalist, but a pretty solid one. Uh, Fire M16, C tier, it's okay. There's not really a reason to take it on Survivalist. You don't get synergies with Firebug weapons, so it's not bad, but it's not great. HZ12, um... I'd really, I don't know where I'd put the HZ12. It's either B or A tier. This one's pretty good. This one you get early on. It's got a lot of ammo. It does okay damage. It has okay scaling. Holds a lot of shots in it, which is nice. So it's all around a fairly solid weapon if you want to get it early on. I still think that some of the other shotguns are a little bit better, but it's not bad by any means. Vector is probably eh, B or A tier. This one's actually pretty good for a submachine gun. It's got a high rate of fire. It has very little recoil. It has nice sights. M16, I'd put this one up into A tier. This one counts as a cross perk weapon between demo and commando, so it works quite well with either of them. It, the grenade on it is pretty nice for clearing up crowds. Uh, the M16 is pretty good for clearing up small enemies. It doesn't weigh too much at six weight, and it's fairly cost effective. It's probably one of the, it's probably the best assault rifle besides maybe the medic assault rifle. MP5 is similar to the Tommy gun. It's probably D tier. There's just not really a reason for you to be taking this early on unless you just want another submachine gun to complement your MP5 or MP7. And that's about it. But even then, you potentially have better options for Tier 2s. You could take it with, like, the double-barreled shotgun. Um, that's kind of the problem with comparing survivalists with other classes' weapons is that some weapons are just going to flat-out outbeat other classes' weapons. MP7, though. This one's probably, like, B tier. This one's really good. Uh, probably starts out as, like, A tier, but then goes down if you want to keep it. Uh, really solid starting weapon, no recoil, good sights, full auto, just all around a really solid starting weapon if you want to take it. Uh, MP or P90, this one's probably also B tier. This one is lightweight and holds a lot of shots, and that's pretty much all you're looking for in a submachine gun for clearing up small enemies. Otherwise, you would just go with pretty much anything else if you want more damage. Again, you'd probably go shotguns or rifles. Um, so the submachine gun, if you want to take something that's good at clearing up small enemies, the P90 is a pretty good choice for that. Uh, Seeker 6 is really awkward on Survivalist. I'd probably put this one into C tier. It's kind of awkward in general just because it's not great on every map. It needs range to be useful, and it's honestly a lot better on demo than it is Survivalist. Single Spitfire, this one's probably also C tier. You're probably not going to take it over something like an 1858. It can do well against small enemies, and if you do take it, it's value early on, so it is something, but it's still not the best. Uh, Centerfire is an easy S tier for Survivalist. This one is really good. High damage, low cost, uh, is cross perk, so either level 5 that you take, you get faster reloads with it. All around super solid weapon, and it scales really well with upgrades. Stoner is also going to go into C tier. It's better than the minigun just because of the weight, but it's still not the best if you would just want to be clearing up small enemies. You have other options, like I think the P90 would honestly be a better choice here than the Stoner in most cases because they do about the same damage. You're going to be using for the same job. It's just the P90 is cheaper and it weighs less. Winchester. Winchester is another really good weapon on Survivalist. I think I'd put this one also up into S tier. Again, cross perk between Gunslinger and uh, Sharpshooter, so faster reload speed. Really high damage scaling with upgrades and just a really solid starting weapon too. Maybe not as solid as like the MP7 to start out with. I think the MP7 is a little bit better for those first waves because you're only fighting small enemies, but definitely as the waves go, go on, the MP7 tends to fall off pretty hard on Survivalist, where the Winchester just kind of scales with it and still competes with pretty much everything that you got. A single winter bite, similar to the two winter bites. This one's pretty decent. I would rather have two though. I'm going to put this into B tier. It's okay in ammo efficiency if you want to take one early on so you can get a little bit more value, but it really doesn't do as well as like two winter bites. The two winter bites are a lot more uh, consistent than one winter bite when freezing enemies. Uh, Zweihander, fun, but really not necessary. Kind of gets outcompeted by the other weapons, uh, so probably C tier. The Killer Watt is a decent weapon on Survivalist, but it's not outstanding, so B tier. It does decent damage. It does have status effects. Its secondary fire is unique, but you can still do better than this. Helios Rifle is honestly pretty decent by itself. I'd put this one up in a B tier just on its own merits. Again, it doesn't scale well with Survivalist. It doesn't. It's not really made for Survivalist because you, again, don't have any synergies with Firebug. But it is the Helios Rifle, and it is pretty good against most enemies. Uh, RPG. RPG I'm going to put up into S tier 2. Faster reloads. Um, really high damage from the RPG. Just an all-around really solid weapon. You can also take Weapon Harness and pair it with another really high damaging weapon, like the AA-12 if you want. That's a fun combination, or you could pair it with two other weapons like the Kaboom Stick and then take 
Um, maybe a single 500 Magnum if you really want to. 2011 is also kind of okay on Survivalist. You're probably not really going to take it because it does have a decent amount of recoil and just because you're firing out two shots doesn't matter as much. You don't have rack them up, so you're not getting a ton of damage. Two 2011s, I guess I'd put a little bit higher because they do have a lot more damage per second and they can stack up pretty quick, but they're still kind of unreliable. I would rather have like the Desert Eagles or the 500 Magnums over them. Uh, the FAL is a pretty solid weapon. FAL is probably, I think the FAL is probably A tier because it counts as a cross perk weapon, so you get faster reloads on either of it. It does okay damage per shot. It has okay sights. You can switch it between full auto and semi-auto. It is a little bit difficult to control on Survivalist, but if you're using full auto only at close range, it can be solid. I don't think it's as good as the M16 on Survivalist, but it's still pretty decent. Husk Cannon, probably like another C tier. It's honestly decent by itself, but no firebug synergies limited demo synergies you kind of have better options than this for the weight and for the price so uh 50 cal also like c tier even though it's probably best on survivalist because you have the extra weight it's still just not a great weapon in general it weighs too much it costs too much the ammo is super expensive you can pair it with other things so you can take it with like m4 shotgun or a double barrel or something like that kaboom stick and have a super strong boss wave weapon but uh that's going to be like the only area that it really shines at unless you can get it i guess a little bit early and just take out flesh pounds with it uh mag 10 another like c tier weapon um uh, it's lightweight that's the well actually you know would you ever take the mag 10 i don't think you would i'd put this one into d tier it's with these other submachine guns and assault rifle type weapons where there's just no reason to take it for the weight and for the price you can get something better something more efficient than it it's still not terrible but I, like i would say this is probably the high end of d tier it's still not great, though. This is the EMP launcher or the Tesla launcher on Berserker. So I'm saying I think it's actually the medic rifle and I switched the spots by accident. Uh, probably still like B tier, though. The EMPs are nice to have. And the fact that it does microwave damage is kind of unique. So it's not too bad there. Uh, STG-44, another like C tier weapon. It's an okay weapon by itself. But with its weight, with its cost, you're not really going to take it with Survivalist. It's not the worst thing in the world, though. Still does decent damage and still actually scales pretty well with upgrades. Uh, Doomstick. Doomstick's probably like A tier. It's pretty fun to throw on Survivalist. It does high damage. You can have extra mobility with it. You can have fast reloads. So it's okay. It does weigh a lot. It does cost a lot, though. Road Redeemer. Road Redeemer is C tier. It's the same as, like, the Katana. It's the same as the Katana in every way. Just it has one damage. This is Static Strikers. Static Strikers are like another C tier weapon. You can do better for melee weapons on Survivalist. It does have the EMP status effect, so if you're looking for that, it's not a terrible option, but that's really all it brings to the table. Disruptor is like B tier. It does decent damage. It has an interesting secondary fire, but it's still not really worth it. The main thing that pushes up this high is just that it's so lightweight. It's lightweight. It's not too expensive, although it is, well, it's a tier four, so it's kind of expensive. But with four weight, it kind of just squeezes it in because of that. Uh, Tommy Boom. Tommy Boom is okay. It's actually okay on Survivalist, really. I'd probably put this one into B tier early on. It really doesn't scale well, though, so if you only want to take it early on and then, like, trade it in for a Kaboom stick, that would be its really only purpose. But going with a, well, you know, I'm gonna, yeah, C tier. C tier, not, not as good as B tier. It's C tier. It's okay. FAMAS, kind of another assault rifle that's just kind of bland. It does have a shotgun on it, um, but in terms of what you get for a tier 3, you could go with something better. Uh, both in terms of a shotgun and in terms of an assault rifle or a submachine gun would probably be a better choice in this case. So it's okay on Survivalist. Um, does actually benefit from both perks, so it is a bit more flexible. So maybe I would actually move it up to B tier because at least then you're getting something for both of them. Bastion, Bastion is pretty decent too. I'm going to put this one, I'm going to put this one up in a B tier because even though you do get a shield with it, which is really nice, it still costs a lot for a tier five weapon, uh, which may not be a huge deal for you depending on what point it is in the game but you can still go with a melee weapon like the frost fang or the ion thruster or really most other or like the hemoclobber and get the defense that you want on survivalist you don't really need to have the bastion shield on there blast brawlers are a lot better on survivalist than they are on uh support i'm gonna put this one up in the b tier because you do have faster reloads and you can actually move faster with them because they are one of the weapons that counts as a ranged weapon that is also a melee weapon so not bad probably the worst of those weapons but still not bad on survivalist thermite bore is probably like c tier on survivalist as well it might be b tier just on its own merits it has high damage it can clear up small enemies quickly 
It's just it's so much better on Firebug that the comparison just isn't really fair to make. Corruptor Carbine is probably like A tier. This one's pretty solid. Uh, it's got long range, it's got high damage, you can heal with it. The heals are a little bit tricky to get used to, but pretty good weapon. Piranha Pistols. Piranha Pistol, a single one is pretty decent on Survivalist because this one also counts, I think, as a melee weapon, so you get bonus movement speed if you want it to. I can't remember if that's true or not. I think it did at one time, but I don't recall now. Either way, it still does decent damage, and you can block and parry with it, so probably uh, B tier. Same goes with the dual piranha pistols. They're not as good as they are on Berserker or on Gunslinger, but they're still fairly solid on Survivalist. Uh, Gravity Imploder is probably like B tier as well. It, it does okay damage. It has okay status effects. You can run more explosive stuff on it. You can run a bigger explosion radius, which is fun with it, so you have those. Beluga Beat, um, honestly, it's okay. B tier. You can bully bosses with it, and you can bully, like, Flesh Pounds with it. That's the main thing that I'm putting it in B tier for. Crossbow's actually a lot better on Survivalist than it is on uh, Demo, because you're probably just using this for stuns and for status effects. So, again, probably, like, another B tier, maybe up to A tier. The Headhunter, this one's honestly better on Survivalist than it is on Sharpshooter. I'm still going to put it in D tier, because it's a problem that nobody really has that I'm aware of in the game. Let's you swell up the heads of Zeds, and then you can potentially stun them with the secondary fire. Uh, it still weighs a lot, though. Still costs a tier 3 slot, so, eh, not great. Sentinel is actually probably better on Survivalist than it is on Commando. I'd probably put this one up into B tier, because at least you can put this behind you and then just have it clear up small enemies, and you still have the ability to fight big enemies pretty efficiently, and you have the extra weight, so if you want to take this, you can also take it with, like, a Kaboom Stick and an RPG, and that's a pretty solid loadout, so decent. Uh, Reducto Ray, this one's weird. I don't know where I'd put this one. Maybe B tier? It honestly depends. It has short range. It does okay against most enemies. Not really good if your teammates are running um, accuracy classes, so if you got Sharpshooter, Gunslinger, Commando. Classes like that, it can honestly kind of mess with them. But if you have just a bunch of Chaos classes, like you got Firebug, Demo, Support, and more Survivalists, then it should be fine. Um, not always best to use it on boss wave, though. I have seen people try to shrink the King Fleshbound down, which makes it so you can no longer duck underneath his uh, chest laser. And yeah, that's a really good way of getting yourself killed by accident. And then our last weapon is the HRG Stunner. This one is, again, kind of okay. You're probably not going to take it over, like, the regular AA-12. The stun effect on it is really not that great, and I would take other submachine guns over this one if I just want a submachine gun. So C tier, even though I know this one's technically a shot, well... It's both technically a shotgun and a submachine gun because it counts as submachine gun damage, but it uses shotgun ammo in the code for some reason. And that does all the weapons in Killing Floor 2 as of right now, I think. I hope I didn't miss any of them. Uh, maybe I did. But here is all the weapons ranked on Survivalist. Um, you have some really great weapons, some pretty bad weapons, and some super strong weapons too. Uh, Survivalist is probably my favorite class right now. I really enjoy playing it because of all the flexibility that it gives, and so many of these weapons are really good. Thanks, everybody, for watching this. I really do appreciate it. This is a long video. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos just like this, and if you'd like to be a part of it, you can. There are links down in the description of this video. Thanks, everybody, who does that. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.